Hey folks, welcome to episode one of the Let's Go Mining series, Hand Mining. The goal of this series is to start off with a brand new character and earn our way up through the verse exclusively through mining. We'll be starting with the hand tool, then moving on to the Grey Cat Rock, Prospector, and eventually the Mole. This is not going to be a detailed tutorial, so if that's what you're looking for, go check out my tutorial series playlist. I have that linked in the description. This is also going to be an unscripted series, so I'll be providing some practical advice as I go, but you'll have to bear with me through some of my ramblings on occasion. We'll be starting off with 20,000 UAC credit balance and the Aurora MR. This is the $45 starter package ship and the only purchase you need to make to be able to play Star Citizen. If you don't already have an account but you're interested in starting, please consider using my referral code uh, that is also linked in the description. Throughout this series, we're going to rent or purchase additional ships with in-game credits, but for right now, I've got the stock Aurora, a standard flight suit, a med pen, and just enough starting credits to get myself outfitted. So today's episode, uh, we're actually going to start with hand mining uh, using the Grey Cat multi-tool. There's some basic equipment we're going to need to start. We'll go ahead and purchase that here in Lorville before we take off. That's going to be over at Tammany and Sons, which is a short trip. We'll head over towards the admin offices and away from the metro station. But we're going to take a detour just before we get to the admin area, which will lead us down towards Tammany and Sons. Which is a nice armor, weapons, and uh, they occasionally have like mining lasers and stuff. We've got a selection there. If you are not familiar with Lorville, it can get pretty confusing. Check out some maps. All the NPCs are standing around. Probably a pretty fresh server. They haven't quite kicked into activity yet. So here at Tammany and Sons, we're going to go ahead and purchase a couple of things. We need to get a backpack, a gadget, a multi-tool, and then the attachments for it. Uh, we need the multi-tool. I'm going to grab one of those. Uh, this is the Pyro RYT. And we need that Orbit mining attachment. Those are absolutely number one. We're, we're not going to get anywhere without that. Uh, I'm going to look at the backpacks. The largest backpack we have available is the Pembroke with 120,000 micro SCU. The other backpacks are 50,000 a piece, or the Aerol has 85,000, which, even though it's more affordable, we want that extra space. I'm going to buy the Pembroke backpack. And in order to be able to use these heavy backpacks, we need to have either a heavy armor torso which is going to cost us about 5,000 AUEC. Or we could actually go and buy the Pembroke armor, which is a, considered a heavy armor. So this undersuit, this one costs 10,000. It's, it's more expensive than if we were to just do the core armor ourselves, but we are going to need this in the future, and it makes sense to go ahead and purchase that now. We won't buy the accompanying helmet yet, because it is pretty expensive. And as you can see, we're already down about 13,000 from where we started, just with our outfitting. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. So we have the undersuit, and uh, yeah, you look like the Michelin Man. A pretty good one. I'm going to use the basic helmet. We're going to be in the cave systems, which have a somewhat of a protected environment, so we won't have to worry about the excessive heat. But when we get out onto the surface mining for Aberdeen, we'll, we'll try and get a helmet to, to coordinate that. The other is the Pembroke backpack, so we get that equipped, and we want to absolutely get our multi-tool attached, and then our orbit, the mining attachment, we can actually just drag and drop it in there, you kind of see the little head of that uh, that device. Make sure to bring around your uh, med pen, uh, always good to have in case of emergencies. And one other necessity we want is the... Quick flare, actually. So we're going to go to the personal weapons and uh, here. Uh, this is going to be really useful as we're running through the cave system just because it's it's kind of dark. Your flashlight has a limited angle beam. So grab that. And then we're going to head over to the spaceport. 
get ready to take off and get to our first cave. The goal for today's session is to get to about 40,000 credits total. Of course, I just spent 15,000, so we'll, we'll, we'll have some work to do. But we should be able to get that. Getting to 40,000 credits will allow us to rent a couple of things. First is the Grey Cat Rock, which we're going to use for surface mining in the next episode. And then the Cutlass Black, which we'll need to actually transport that Grey Cat Rock around in. The Cutty Black is about 27 to 30,000 credits, depending on where you rent it from. And the Grey Cat Rock is a 4,000 credits to rent. So we will do our best uh, to earn that today. Should be able to do that. And kind of a recap. We were we started off at uh, 20,000 AUEC. Let's go ahead and equip that quick flare. So you can uh, attach it to a couple of different positions on your body. I always like to have it pretty close to where my face is at, just so that I can uh, easily look down and it's right there, using that inner thought to activate it. And now I got myself a nice little pink glow. Pretty nice. Definitely helpful as you're working through cave systems, that little bit of extra ambient light. I could have technically gone through, searched a bunch of bunkers to get the multi-tool attachment and even the quick flares, they show up there quite often. But uh, in order to actually get started right out of the gate, it just seemed a lot quicker to go that way. We will, as we're moving through, probably raid a couple of the, uh, the outposts uh, when we have an opportunity to sell. Uh, so we'll collect the gemstones, go sell them at an outpost on the same moon. Obviously, looting there is a great place to uh, potentially, you know, we might even find a helmet that we would need for the uh, the extreme heat environment on Aberdeen. What we're going to be looking for today is actually the gemstone Hadonite, uh, one of the three surface gemstone deposit types. So we have Hadonite, Alphorite, and Dolavine. Now, Hadonite sells for about 275 credits. Per rock, and you'll get around eight rocks for each of the deposits you, you fracture. We're gonna jump into a cave uh, that has a bunch of the appropriately sized deposits. Caves are nice because yes, any anything that's in the cave is gonna be a 0.1 mass deposit Welcome for these the walking caves. The surface deposits can range between the 0.1 mass and then there are others at a 0.8 mass. Those are unfortunately much too large for the hand mining tool to be able to, to crack. As we arrive here, we'll see there's definitely a benefit to going to a cave if you're, you're stuck on hand mining mode. Great opportunity to go see dozens of deposits all in a kind of limited area. Again, this is something you can do with the the most basic starter ships. It does help to have an inventory, being able to walk around inside the ship, that you can transfer stuff into the inventory. I know some of the some of the like Mustangs and stuff. They're just a pilot seat. They don't actually have an interior. Let's take a look at the Aurora here. Huh? So kind of a cozy interior. Uh, we've got our bed back there. We have the two side doors, and then we have the pilot seat. Squeeze in there. A little, little heavy in my uh, flight suit. Ready up, and we'll go ahead and call for Orville Landing Services. So watch for that uh, ceiling to open up. Healing there. They did add a keybind actually uh, with the most recent patch. So uh, you no longer have to call directly using that comms MFD multifunction display. You can actually just have it bound to a particular key. I usually have that on my joystick, but I'm using the keyboard and mouse today. Uh, 
So we bought our undersuit, a backpack, multi-tool, mining attachment, quick flare. I think we're good to go. You can start for as little as about 7,000 AUEC, 7,000 credits. And uh, spend a little bit more just because I know we're going to use that Pembroke undersuit. That was another 5,000 or so. Trying to hit about 34 to 40,000 credits today, if that's possible. So we're going to look out and try to find ourselves navigation towards Aberdeen. It is up in the sky. What we're heading to is a cave on Aberdeen uh, called HDES Dobbs. This is a walk-in cave uh, with a, a pretty easy to locate uh, entrance. It's one of the quantum travel points of interest that's actually marked on the map. That's a bit of a two-edged sword. It's going to be easy for us to navigate there. But that also means that it's going to be easy for other players to navigate to and potentially find this. And our, our ship is going to be parked outside. We can't fly it in with us. If a rogue player were to approach and uh, see the, the Aurora all by its lonesome, it would be a pretty easy sitting target. So That is one of the risks. There is a list of other caves that you can find uh, throughout the verse. I'll post a link in the description below. It might be updated in the future, so keep an eye out for that. If we look at bounty hunting, you might need to do a certification to be able to go find their occasional bounty hunting caves. Let's see. Some of those are locked behind some mission wrap, so we'll hold off on that. Once you get some certifications done, you can usually find missions to investigate missing persons or entrenched bounties that end up in caves. Now, those cave systems will have similar gemstone deposits, scatterings throughout. When I think about the walking caves again, all of the gemstones that you're going to come across are going to be the point one mass the exact size you need for the hand mining tool. And they're all very close together, so you really have no need to... You don't have to go out and survey. You're not relying on a whole lot of random number generator. It's still variable as far as which type of deposits are in each you know, deposit spawn location. But in general, you'll be able to find exactly what you want and dozens of them. As we approach, kind of see there a little bit of an unusual terrain feature here. Uh, the entrance to the cave has kind of the walkout. We'll turn the lights off and you can see we've got, we've got some lights there on the ground. Let's go ahead, pull it in, and uh, get landed next to the entrance. And as we get in here, yeah, you see all of those gemstone deposits start stacking in there. Just a quick you know, glance. They only show up when you're within about 100 meters. And uh, you know, on the surface, it makes them very difficult to spot. However, here in a cave like this, you'll, you'll find dozens. I want to make sure my equipment is all set. Alright, we have the mining attachment proper. Now, as we exit the ship, uh, we do want to make sure we uh, we close up the doors and stuff afterwards. The ship will be locked and that just prevents, you know, prevents other players if they don't just outright destroy your ship. Uh, they won't be able to get in without you know, causing some damage to it. So. See, we have uh, the environment here, a little marker. Without the helmet, it gives us about a 30 minute survival time. Uh, that's not too bad. If I were in a standard undersuit, we would need to, to spend a little bit more time. As we proceed into the cave, we already see our first deposit. It's a green dolavine. This one is actually the cheapest material per unit. 
only sells for 130 credits per gem. So we want to skip over that. And here's our first Hadonite. There we go. Hadonite sells for 275 per unit. As we get in here, the mining interface here, we have the, the resistance of the rock, the instability of the rock, the rock mass, and the rock type uh, on the right side. And then on the left side, we have our power, our current charge level. And then as we get into the optimal green window, this will start filling in from inside out. And then we have this overcharge area above. We want to fill up this green bar all the way. So we'll keep the power level up in uh, once we get it there. Try not to overcharge. Keep it in the green zone until it's fully filled in. Get a little bit closer. It doesn't tell you the optimal range on the, the hand tool. And of course, it's a little finicky as far as overall targeting, but you basically need to be right up on top of the rocks. You can also see down here, uh, right in the center, where that says 70, that shows the current charge level. We're, you know, power level of the, the laser we're applying. So we can increase or decrease that using our scroll wheel. Scroll up to increase, scroll down to decrease. I am using keyboard and mouse for this. Uh, other people, I know a lot of times as I'm a, a prospector mining, I will actually switch over to my joysticks. I've got a dual joystick setup that makes it pretty easy. So with each rock that we fracture, it'll leave behind these gems. And they're you know, obviously really bright with that flashlight there. But you can hover over them and store, or you can just double click F, the crosshair over it, and it'll automatically store that in your backpack. You don't need to store your multi-tool while you're doing this. I've just found that if I do have my multi-tool out still while I'm doing this, it will it'll appear kind of in a random off position be a little bit too low. Here's our next deposit type. This is an Aphorite. Uh, that one sells for 152 credits per unit, so not quite as cheap as the Dolavine, but still, we want to we wanna get the most bang for our buck. So we have another Had Knight, and that's, that's what we're going to be looking for, just the pink deposit. You can identify them by their deposit color. They'll have these little inclusions on the rock. The pink ones are Head Knight, the blue is Avarite, and green is Dolabine. Caves are always so creepy, you get some of the echoing sounds, and anytime you break a rock, it, you know, you get a little bit of extra sound. And it sounds like there's somebody that might be like sneaking up behind you. You want to be careful of that if you get into a pretty common cave that there could be missions that spawn there. So you might see NPCs, you might run into you know, a missing, uh, missing Spelunker's body, something like that. There are missing persons missions that will have you doing, uh, doing a lot of Spelunking. Alright, and do be careful. The rocks will try and roll downhill. So if you're on a ledge and break one, it is possible a lot of your your gemstones will just go scattering down the hillside. I recommend taking a look around after you've collected what you think is there. Just make sure you haven't dropped any. You know, it could mean the difference between you know, maybe a few hundred extra credits. That's that'll be key, especially as you're starting out. Let's see, we've got one just a little bit there. You're not going to get filthy rich cave mining. Uh, I would say you can expect, once you get pretty well practiced at it, about 40,000 credits per hour, 40,000 credits per run is, is probably good. You might be able to like speed run it and do better, but you know, I, I wouldn't worry too much about pushing at you. Your real money makers are once you get into rock mining, 
and then further on into prospector mining. That's that's where you're gonna make a significant amount of money. So we do these caves. We'll have a couple of different branches, and uh, I like to just hang to the left as we branch off. We'll go through that. And that way, all I have to do is just keep on the right side on my way back out of the cave. Keep an eye out for all the deposits. This is rock number three. We'll do a quick inventory check once it's cracked. You don't want to apply too much power as you're heating the rock up. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you'll overshoot that optimal window. What I see a lot of players doing is going full 100% until they hit the bottom of the green zone. By that time, you're, you're going to absolutely overshoot that. I like to keep it very consistent. Only as much power as we need to keep it mostly stable. Rocks do have instability which will make the charge level fluctuate. It won't always match exactly how much power you're putting in. That's actually what makes Volatile or Quantanium much more difficult, is it, it has a really high instability value. When you're applying the same amount of charge, that, that charge level is going to dance everywhere. Part of the reason why you're going to have a hard time mining Quantanium in a rented ship or uh, using stock loadouts, you definitely need to change out lasers and the modules to make it work. And just waiting for... Got this one that's just kind of at an odd angle. Might have to leave this couple in there that just don't want to be grabbed. So, again, quick look around, make sure we didn't lose any. And of course, we've got another head knight right there next to us. If you get good at spotting these, you don't really need to have the gun out. But when you do have the gun out, uh, it'll highlight the rocks in yellow uh, if they are a mineable deposit and give you a quick readout on the mining type. technically go and break other rocks uh, with a combination of uh, gadgets. There is a video floating out there showing them breaking a gigantic mass rock with just the, the gray cat rock. You can do that with a multi-tool. Gadgets are still fairly new, so there are going to be some weird edge cases. Because they stack multiplicatively, you get that exponential gain each time you add a new one. So, certain benefits are going to be uh, useful. Um, others, uh, other modifiers, will actually be pretty dangerous. Fun time to keep up. That'll be for another episode. Right now, we're just out here mining gems. Take a look around. Continue just to make sure we aren't leaving anything behind. I also like to toggle the light off and on. Sometimes we get a little bit better reflection without the bright headlight, or it might be in another area that's not completely obvious. So, well satisfied. Okay, number three, and we'll do a quick check. So that was three rocks in. We're at twenty-five percent. We got twenty on that page. Twenty-eight gemstones so far. 28 is going to be, you know, seven or 8,000 credits already. Not bad, not bad. Um, that'll quickly offset the amount we've, we've spent on the armor here. And then we're getting into the profit zone soon. Get 
this a little bit more. So if you're interested in the pricing spreadsheets, I've got a bunch of cheat sheets on my Discord server covering both the gemstones and some of the other cores, as well as a pretty good community of uh, folks that are industrial focused. Right now that's mining, just since mining is one of the most, uh, the most fleshed out gameplay loop for uh, industrial purposes. Really looking forward to the salvage that's coming down the pipeline later on, uh, of course. Give me some reason to uh, get my reclaimer out and feed it. We're sitting here right on top of this other stuff here. This is uh, this is actually Ranta dung. So Ranta is like a cave monster in lore. Unfortunately, no uh, no fauna yet. Yeah, that'd be pretty terrifying. Pyro is supposed to have pyro crabs. It'll be in the caves. That will be actually pretty terrifying. Uh, I, I don't know that I'm gonna spend a whole lot of time hanging out in caves in Pyro. Oh, hey, here we go. Missed one rock there. Just happened to see it on the way back up. I did see we had another head night. Quickly making some money. Aberdeen is nice because Aberdeen does have the highest percentage chance for Hadonite rocks. We'll be here for cave mining as well as surface mining coming up next. Just the best chance of finding them compared to the other materials. And granted, you only have the three types of gemstones available anyways. As we get up onto the surface, it'll it'll be pretty cool. Driving around the Great Cat Rock. It's really nice, you know, kind of entertaining surface buggy. I'm gonna just back up here. As well. Slightly overcharged. Let that rock cool off just a little bit. And you can also you notice I, I backed away from a rock that one of two things that helps with. First, is as you get further away, the laser power gets a little bit less, so when you're dealing with the mouse scroll wheel. It's not as responsive as, say, like a throttle slider. So you have a limit to the amount of increase or decrease you can go per second, you know, per tick. Backing away actually lowers the total laser power that the, the rock sees. And then also, when you overcharge like that, the rocks can explode and cause bodily harm. So that would be no good, especially considering you could potentially lose all of the stuff you just spent your money on. But, you know, 15,000, you know, you can do a couple of package delivery missions to earn that back. It's a good starting point. And then we'll help uh, kind of bootstrap us into some uh, some rented ships, some purchased ships. Oh, I accidentally hit grab. Let's go ahead and store that. One other note about this quick flare. Eventually it does run out. They uh, they, they dim out. If you find that happening, you can actually equip it, or unequip it, put it into your inventory, and then bring it back out, and you should be able to reactivate it from there. Just do a little recharge on it. Get some extra, extra stuff down there. Inventory check, we're at 39, and yeah, that's 41, 42-ish. Just a bunch of head night right inside the cave entrance here. This will be a pretty easy one. Now when the backpack gets full, you can go and transfer all the gemstones into your vehicle inventory and then come back down for more mining. The risk you're going to run into is that if you leave your ship out there on the surface, it's pretty easy for somebody to come through and blow it up. And you could potentially lose all of that material. I like to, and this is probably a good good practice for uh, 
hand mining, rock mining. Kind of forced to do it, prospector. I always like to spend a couple of trips, a couple of times per session, going back and forth to sell. You wanna, you wanna cash in. The more that I hold onto these gemstones, the more risk. When I die, that I'll lose a lot of value. So I'll fill up the one backpack, but afterwards. Uh, once the backpack's full, instead of transferring, I will just go ahead and run back to the outpost here on uh, Aberdeen, uh, where we can sell these. Gemstones don't need to be refined. Uh, they can be sold directly as is. There's no like extra profit or refinery gameplay loop you need to worry about. You also don't need to have like a big cargo ship to haul them all back and forth. When you get into ore mining, you can sell the ore as raw material. Uh, directly to the refinery stations. But you lose about half of your profit by doing that. If you spend a little bit of, uh, you know, the refinery order takes some credits, but uh, if you spend a little bit of time doing that and you have a cargo transport ship, you can actually uh, cash in pretty pretty heavily. There's another Haddonite right there. It's very simple. No real complicated cargo hauling gameplay loops need to be involved in. Prior to patch 317, there were a number of bugs with the Grey Cat Rock that made it really difficult to be successful mining with. There was a collection bug where all of your gemstones would actually swirl around your uh, Grey Cat buggy. It just made it very, very challenging to even collect once you have the rocks broken. Fortunately, those have been resolved if the, with the 317. With also detection changes, it's been a lot easier to find surface deposits now. So rock mining is actually in a really good place um, post 317. My favorite joke is always when, uh, when somebody asks me how rock mining is, I tell them it's always a little buggy. Because it's a little ground vehicle. Buggy. I'll add a drum roll to that in, uh, in post. Uh, this, as I mentioned, this is an unscripted Zero to Hero playthrough. What happens is what happens. I'll try my best to, uh, to keep you entertained as we go through. We're going to start with this hand tool. Another Haddonite. So we'll start with hand mining. Just to like bootstrap ourselves up from uh, 20,000 starting credits. The gold, we'll move into uh, renting a rock next session. And potentially owning one and buying one outright. Using that for an episode or so. And then getting up to the point where we can rent or potentially purchase a prospector. Owning a prospector is probably the, the end goal for a lot of miners. That's where you can make real significant amounts of profit. You can move on into the, the Argo Mole as well. I think right now the issue with overall resources is that there's, there's nothing that can really max out a mole in one or two deposits. You've got to get really, really lucky. Back off of that overcharge. you got to get really lucky to find a couple of deposits close enough together that would make them all useful, specifically for Quantania. And also, the, there's a huge price disparity between Quantanium and anything else that you could mine, which is unfortunate. It kind of makes it gives you no real choice as far as what you go out and mine with those larger ships. If there was a little bit of a better price gradient, you know, something uh, that wasn't exactly half as expensive, then that would be fine. But you just, the price doubles once you get into Quantanium, and that's, that kind of, that drives people. They, they go where the money's at. I think also having a reputation system uh, tied to mining would be really awesome. You'd, you'd get missions to be able to do specific mining types. 
We get mission rewards and reputation rewards as an incentive as well. Like I'd, I'd, I'd go mine titanium for a week uh, if it meant I got to max out my reputation and, and get some perks uh, within the mining guild. All right, quick peek around, making sure we didn't leave any rocks behind here. Let's continue downward. Alright, one more head night. We are, man, we're not even 60 meters into the cave here and already up to 64%. So, obviously, great opportunity. Came in one of the, these caves the other day. And it took me probably uh, 10 minutes walking down the cave to find my first Tatanite. Just completely random. Or I think another player had been in and had uh, scooped up all the good stuff. Don't know that there's a specific reset timer on these, but I know it's longer than about 15, 20 minutes. It might be server-based if we have to get a completely new server once somebody's mined it all out. I never really had the patience just to sit through and say, all right, I'm going to wait an hour until I see these rocks respawn. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm patient. Like, mining, definitely one of those skills that requires some patience. But I'm not sitting around for three hours in a cave waiting for rocks to grow patient that would be a whole other level oh did I just inspect all right we get back to the double clicking with the F key just so that we don't have to worry about accidentally clicking anywhere else I'm always so nervous about double clicking because there's so many other menu prompts on other like interaction options that it just seems risky Oh, come on. I'm not quite sure. It doesn't want to. Okay, we're at 68. Alright. Just pull out our gun and it'll wake itself up again. If you run into that where it's not picking it up, it might be because there could be one in your hand and it's just depending on whether you're crouched or doing something weird. It could just be unhappy. It also might be a specific gemstone that's not happy. Of course our, notice our quick flare's gone out. I'm gonna go re-equip it. And then activate it again. See if we can grab it. Yeah, it looks like this rock is just not interactable. It's probably in a bad location, some clipping or occlusion. Which is a bummer, but we're actually, what do we say we were at? 70%? That's not bad. That's not bad. Just keeping an eye out. That's blue aphorite. Just keep an eye on the edge. Another got aphrodite, aphrodite, dolabine, dolabine. All right, this is where it starts back up again. Has our luck run out? We'll see. Corner area. The rocks like to hang out like right along the edge, and sometimes in these rubble piles. And there's another hat night. We got aphrodite, aphrodite. We'll just take a look back here as well. Make sure there's not anything in this rubble pile. Okay. Up to 70%. You get too far down in the caves, you get a lot of branching tunnels and such. It's, it's easy to get lost, so having some good luck at the start means an overall uh, more efficient trip. 
much less likely to get turned around and lost. Now, uh, right now, the cave systems, there's a couple of layouts. They're not exactly like unique or groundbreaking. And if you spend a lot of time in caves, you'll get really used to it. Um, so yeah, during uh, last year's Halloween celebration, uh, Day of the Vara, I think, at a contest for cave running. You would have to go from a specific starting point at the mouth of a cave entrance all the way to the the dark depths. Get on top of a, a stack of crates and all the way back out. And people were supposed to speed run that. That was quite intense. I made a couple of attempts, but I was still like 20 or 30 seconds behind what some of the initial contestants were doing. It was, there are some people that spent a lot of time in caves in Star Citizen. Which is funny. It's a space game. Why would you go in, go inside a cave in a space game? Whatever. It's a first person universe. That's why. Yeah, stand on a couple of rocks here. Make sure we get them all. Again, just take a look around. Make sure you haven't missed anything. Talk your light on and off. We're, we're going to be passing back through here as we work our way back up to our, our ship. Nothing we are going to be too upset about leaving behind. Alright, we're satisfied there. And here we're gonna start heading down this hill. Now be careful, don't don't just launch yourself, always look before you leave. That's probably good life advice. Red's advice for a long and healthy life. Alright, there is a head knight right there. You know, as I'm you know wondering why I'm like climbing backwards down the hill. Yeah, see, we've got one up there too. I'm actually I'm gonna grab the one that's up on this this ledge. Break that one. We'll move our way down. Just because they're going to fall down on top of each other. Uh, anyways. If you notice on these caves, there are these ledges with the yellow paint or yellow moss. Those are ones that you're actually able to vault up. Assuming you've got a little bit of an upward angle, uh, you can hit the space bar and it'll actually have your character vault. We're also in Aberdeen, which is a low low gravity planet, low gravity moon. Vaulting and just jumping in general, get a little bit more mobility. All right, that scattered a little bit. I I I hope we didn't lose too many. collision in these caves. It can be wonky every now and then. Alright, what do we say? It grabbed. We're up to 80. Not quite sure how many that is. I'm toggling the inventory up open. Uh, let us actually store that. Could have sworn there were more. But I bet you they fell down that little tiny hole. Take a quick peek around. If we're lucky, they'll clip through the bottom here and like out the out into the, the base area down there. We'll have that to look forward to. And we're gonna go ahead and hit this rock. This is like my favorite. I've I've seen this particular spawn location a few times. You just know everything that breaks off of this is going to go tumbling down the hole. Makes cleanup a little bit harder. You got to walk around a little bit more, but you know, we'll, we'll make it work. Just a little bit of patience, that's all it takes. If you're playing Star Citizen, I'm assuming you're a patient person, anyways. That's actually what I named my carrot. It's the patience and optimism. Watch 
staff hour level, and what happened there is we, like, occasionally, the targeting won't be 100% lined up. Let's see, all of those. Yep, right down. Oh, hey. That isn't too bad. Oh, that one's going to be a pain. We'll pick up the others here. We might not be able to snag that one. If we had a tractor beam, might be able to make it work. Uh, but I did not buy a tractor beam attachment. Maybe that's, that is one thing you might consider in the future. If you're out mining on your own, consider a tractor beam. It's only a couple hundred credits extra, so it's not too bad. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm not going to be able to get that. But we got one over here. You can see the nice reflection off of the rock. Helps it stand out pretty well. And let's do an inventory check. Oh, these are the yellow ledges I was talking about. 88%. So we got one, maybe two more rocks. Two more rocks and we'll be completely full. We'll leave some behind. What do you know? Already have one head knight right here. Good positioning. Now, you can technically. This works. Do this all by sound. I won't mess with that. You can do it by sound, like mine in third person, if you want to get real tricky with it. There's just not great angles right now on the camera. I've disabled my head tracker. So my third person views usually wobble a little bit there. It, it might be upset with that. All this time, almost a full load in the backpack done. And we're still at 99% hydration. Gotta love it. We will have some leftover space in our suit. I think maybe the suit legs. Yeah, core armor's got eight micro SEU compared to 120. So we'll have a little bit of overflow. That'll be fine. Quick flare was getting in the way. Just looking around, let's see if there is any other gemstones that tumbled off the hill. Yeah, right there. We got two. This is why that quick flare is useful. Great ambient lighting, you know, kind of omnidirectional. Get that torch that's just the narrow beam, and it's it's quite a pain. Okay. Let's keep moving along. Did we inspect around here? I don't think we did. Just I'm not I'm not seeing anything that looks like a mineable. You can kind of hover over it if you want. Scan. And if there's anything that is mineable, it'll pop up with a scan reading and the yellow outline. There it is. I think that's uh, right at the top of the ledge there. Right there. Should be. Hopefully the last hat knight we need. Now I'm kind of clipped in here. Bit of a difficult angle to get there, but I do have enough range on the laser to be able to hit it. I'm just hoping all of these rocks slide down the hill towards me. At least get into interaction range. If not, I could try go prone and crouch up there. Go prone and 
food store. See, that works. You, you can totally go prone and collect these. Nice little, like, badger hole right there. Oh, jeez. Don't, don't get too... Don't get too friendly with it. Back up a little bit. Get ourselves stood up. And come down this just a little bit to see if there's anything that tumbled down. Oh man, that's going to be... We have another Hadonite right there. Anything that uh, is going to be recoverable from below there. Something off right there. If anything else will be a lot further. Oh, there's one. And two. See? It's worth it to inspect. Now we have one extra head night up there. If I've got the room for it, I'm gonna snag it. We're at 125%, 100% here, 25% here. You know, we can fit six more. Let's do it. I don't know that we'll get more than that, but it's in such a great position. Just waiting for us. Pretty awesome. Completely full of Hadonite. We'll go catch this in. This will get us set up for episode two phenomenally. Again, the plan there. We're going to rent a Grey Cat Rock, and we're going to rent a Cutlass Black. I think the goal is we're going to we're gonna get enough money that we can purchase the Cutty, or the, the Grey Cat Rock outright. We'll save up for that Cutty Black. We may just rent the, the rock the entire time. Let's see. It's only 172,000 credits, so it's a, a pretty good, pretty good in-game purchase. You can make that back in one good rock session, or maybe one hour of rock mining, if you get real lucky. Expect maybe 150 to 200,000 rock mining. Prospector, if you're doing Quantanium, you can make 300 to 400,000 per hour. Knowing where to look. Making sure you got the right equipment and all that. Did we lose one down here? We got the yeah, F3. If we got the room for it. And we are full. Okay. Gonna go ahead and just grab one. I'll grab one and see if we can't carry it all the way out. Leaving one behind. Better to come home full than come home empty. Leave a little behind. Just watching for these yellow ledges that we have to vault up. So I'm just looking up a little bit and hitting the space bar. Positioning yourself so you're mostly flat against it. And this is uh, Amiyashi Plague. Uh, you can sell these, it's like 12 or 13 credits per piece. Definitely not as valuable as the gemstones. Watch your head. And see, all that within about 100 meters of our aurora. Where things as we get up towards the surface. We are looking at daytime. Now that we're all full, uh, we're actually going to head over to uh, Norgard. It's my favorite outpost in the entire Stanton system. Just because I've done so much surface mining on Aberdeen. Um, plus, it, uh, it sounds like the place where Thor would live. So I'm always on board with that. Let's go up and uh, get ourselves traveled over. We're up to 
down to 92% hydration. Back into our ship. We'll take off. Just trying to get elevation here. And yeah, there it is. Almost directly on the opposite side of the planet. Which is great. I want to strafe backwards up to elevation. We're, we're going to keep our quantum travel on here until we get the uh, the spool markers. Yeah, some green indicators for both of our destinations. Do the spline jump around the planet. About to get paid, folks. A hundred percent had an night. Completely full. We'll see how this will turn in. Now, as I mentioned, you can transfer into the ship inventory, extend your mining trip that way. If you're at a safer location that's not not an easily recognized like travel to uh, quantum destination, I'd feel a little bit safer that way. I I do know there are players who would go through and just travel to random outposts like that, explode any ship they see around. Some people will do that. It's the risk you take when it's easy to locate. The harder it is for you to find the cave, the harder it is going to be for other people to find it. That's usually the case. It might make it just a little bit easier if you yourself are there. The ship you can detect. Here's our outpost. Good old Norgard. We're going to be spending a lot of time here the next couple of a uh, couple of episodes we can take the big pad I'm actually gonna go land on the small pad keyboard and mouse piloting skills um, 8 out of 10 would fly again before getting out of here I am going to request some refueling and a quick repair it's always nice to top off. I do that before I exit the ship so that I don't have to wait for any uh, timers or cooldowns. And make sure you close the door behind you. Especially with these outposts. It's an armistice zone. You can see that on the top right, the, the no bullet icon. So it means uh, weapon fire is prohibited. There's actually mechanics in game to prevent damage uh, occurring to ships uh, in most cases. So that was the uh, mining control. We actually want to go into this building that's marked storage. This is where the actual terminal is going to be at. So passing through the airlock. There's that guy. Uh, we're, we're going to actually just go right up to the terminal. Got a cell. On the backpack and the armor. Alright. We got Hadonite selling for 35,000. It's a total of 128 units. Perfect. Alright. Said the goal was about 40,000. Uh, we are right at that 41,000. 781. I'm going to spend the rest of this session looting. Got some uh, some uh, boxes in this outpost that, uh, that I think I could use.
And to wrap up, we're going to end up at Everest Harbor. A little bit easier getting in and out at the space station than it is through Lauraville. So, we'll navigate our way there. Don't have to worry about the trains going through Lorville. Be great. We'll, we'll go get set up at Everest Harbor. All of the uh, space stations around the major planets do have medical facilities now, so you can set your spawn point there instead of the uh, the planets. Don't have to worry about trains. It's actually really quick out of the easy habs uh, down in the, uh, the hangars area. I prefer that. Everest Harbor is a great location. Nice and central. Forty-one thousand seven hundred eighty-one credits. We're down to five, so we earned thirty-five thousand mining. Spent a spent a chunk of it, but hey, you know we're we're, we're doing all right here. Let's go ahead and call. Ever is hard. Thank you, and please visit again. Hello, and thank you for contacting EDL Landing Assist. Get our landing pad assigned. Please proceed to assign landing bay. There we are. Oh, almost directly at the sun. One problem I see a lot of new players do is they'll they'll try and get to the station as fast as possible, but they don't realize that you're Reverse thrusters are actually not nearly as powerful as your forward thrusters, so it takes a lot longer to slow down. That's just general piloting in the verse. I think it's like a badge of honor for most players that their uh, first death is because they crashed into a station at high speed. Just a quick top off. 14 AUEC. Not bad. Go get set up inside Everest Harbor with the medical bay. And get ready for episode 2. Trusty little Aurora. And to recap our progress today, we made 35,000 credits cave mining after spending about 15,000 to get started, but we are well set up for the next episode where I'm going to rent some vehicles to start into surface mining. And that ends episode one of the Let's Go Mining series. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to find me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And also, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because this Zero to Hero story is just getting started.